Hi, this is Angie at Chicken Scratch, and this is the project we're making today. It's a stair step card. You can mail it in a regular standard envelope. Okay, so I hope you enjoy the following video. It was film live. Okay, so we've got Bermuda Bay, and this measures eight and a half by five and a half. So that's our standard. That piece is accurate. Um, the Granny Apple Green is a scrap. That's accurate. And another piece of Granny Apple Green, and that's accurate because it's a scrap. And Daffodil Delight. Our Whisper White is also <laughs> scraps. So the piece I question is this one right here, and I have it at one and an eighth by two and three quarters. This is the piece that I question the measurement, okay? This one's accurate, four by two and a half, okay? So there's our paper. We're gonna start out with stamping, and we have a lot, so I hope that Y'all are not in a hurry today. I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to do this in 30 minutes. Look at all these chicks. Um, you know, and I have to really exhaust y'all with this stamp set because, you know, my name, my business name is Chicken Scratch. Although it's missing the K and the E. Ask me how many times I've said that. Um, anyway, okay, so we're gonna start with Fuzzy Head here. one's done. I could have taken a break from using them this week because they are available longer, but the problem is that the paper that I'm using retires the Oso Ombre. So I still have more projects using that paper. So my choice is are I'm either gonna use it after it retires or I'm gonna be going live a bunch this weekend. It depends on when I get all the packets in the mail, if I'm still alive. No, I'm joking, kind of, sorta. Um, yeah, if I'm still alive, no. It's not that I'm still alive, it's just I might have to, um, I might have to rest for a few days, you know. Coop, um, what's that word? I don't know. There's a word for it I'm looking for, but. Okay, all these chicks can go back in their basket. We are done stamping. Next, we're going to color. Um, well, the packets are supposed to go in the mail today, but I'm still waiting on the envelopes. The envelopes that I use come from Texas, and Texas shut down last week. I'm telling you, I always say, when it rains, it pours. Who would have thought that the envelopes would recuperate? You're right, thank you, Adrian. Yes, that's it. Okay, so we are using lots of blends. It kind of ties in with my host code special. And these markers are so easy to color. You don't have to have mad skills. I know that there's lots of demonstrators that have fancy ways of coloring. I'm not that demonstrator. I just do simple, quick, get her done. You don't have to. You don't have to be a um, a master at coloring to use these markers. You certainly can be, but you don't have to. I color with them just like um, I did with crayons. I'm starting with Bermuda Bay. Oh yes, Texas shut down. That's what it was about. Thank you. I'm here scratching my head. I'm like, I don't understand. That, yeah, I moved on to. Other uh, other things. Okay, so Bermuda Bay. Sorry about that. Yes, it's Texas' fault. Hey, yeah, it's not really y'all's fault. Who would have ever thought? Okay, Bermuda Bay. We're done. Light crumb cake. I'm setting down. So see, I'm just coloring. I'm not doing anything fancy. I'm just coloring just coloring within the space. So I'm not doing any shading, any special. I'm done with the crumb cake. Um, now we're gonna go with um, Dark Daffodil Delight. I bet you're really excited, Randy, and probably exhausted if you're moving. <laughs> I can sympathize. Okay, so now we're using 
Dark Daffodil Delight on her tail feathers. And then now I'm just gonna trace around the edge down here on the bottom and inside the wing and then up here up top. So when I say I just trace around the edges like I did with a crayon, y'all remember when we were younger, we would take a, a dark marker and we would trace the outside edge. Now I'm using the light, Daffodil Delight. So all I did was trace the outside edge with the dark and then color in in the middle with the light. So I'm gonna color the candle and now her hair. My hair looks like this sometimes when I wake up. <laughs> okay. We're not done with that, but we're gonna use the light pumpkin pie. and now her beak. Okay, so there she is. That image is done. Now we're gonna move over to this one. We're gonna use Rich Razzleberry for this part, and then this little Dumaflachi. And then, light pumpkin pie for the beak. And then light pool party for the wings. And then dark smoky slate for this, and then I'm gonna go around the edge also with the dark. And you don't have to do this if you don't want to, but it kind of sort of makes you look like you know what you're doing. And then now the light smoky slate. Okay, that one's done. All you miss is that I've stamped the images. We're, we're gonna be here a little bit longer today. Okay, so now for this one, we're gonna use um, Light Mango Melody for the crest up here. And for the tail feathers. and for this wing. We're gonna use light pumpkin pie for her feet. On our birds, we call these talons. I'm not real sure. I mean, chicken people reference chicken feet, so I imagine they're called feet on a on a chicken. <laughs> Are y'all laughing? Okay, so now I'm gonna use the uh, light pool party to color in. The feathers.
Okay, so these are three of our images that we're done coloring. All we have left is this one. So we're gonna take the rich razzleberry again and color here and here and light pumpkin pie for her beak. And then we're gonna use the light smoky slate. And notice how I didn't trace the outside edge of this one, because you don't have to every time. It's still gonna look good, so, in my opinion. Okay, we are done coloring. There's our images. We have four chicks, right? Four. I'm gonna put my markers up before I proceed. Clean up my desk. I get, I get less frazzled if my space is clear. And now we're gonna do some cutting. Actually, we're gonna do a lot of cutting. So we're gonna bring these pieces in also. Uh, we are using um, these dies. <laughs> that is a lot, right? Um, what's the name of the grass that we're using? So this grass image with the cattails is Friendly Silhouettes, okay? You don't have to add grass if you don't want to. It's just, it just makes it look so much cuter. Okay. So let's cut this chick out. Okay, line this up. Is she on there? Yeah. Oh my goodness, I taped it and it still moved. Okay, Angie, I am not going to rush. Okay, here's our first one. She's all cut out. Rut row. Bella's asking for lunch. You're gonna have to wait, honey bun. Okay, this one is cut out. Nope. I don't have anyone to blame it on today. It's just me being Angie. You know why I mess up is because I'm thinking about it too hard. Like I've heard so many people have issues. And I'm like, I've not had a one. And then, and then as I'm live, I'm like, oh, I better make sure I don't mess up. And then, of course, I get myself all um, frazzled. I do have issues when I don't stagger them though. I will admit that. So, yes, I stagger them. <laughs> my my surface is doing a little jig. It's, yeah, okay. There we go, done with that. We have one more chip to cut out and that's with this one. Line it up. If I didn't use the grid paper, my desk wouldn't, everything wouldn't slide and shift so much, but I really like having the grid paper. Like it just, to me, looks so much cleaner to have it. Okay, next is a circle 
cut out the grating. This is the um, layering circles dies. <laughs> okay, there's that one. There's the rest of it. This has to be behind that one. If it exceeds past the number one, it won't work. See what I'm saying? Number one plate has to be out, not back. We still have more cutting. Y'all are gonna be like, seriously? Um, so we got a corn stalk to cut here. And then we got some corn. <laughs> I don't know if I can cut all these at one time. We'll try it. Okay. Yay. Corn. Okay, now all we have left is this thing right here, the grass, and it may not work on the mini. I might have to get the big one out. This guy's so huge compared to the little one. I really like using the little one. I should have tested this out this morning. I don't need this now. Oh my gosh, that's smooth as butter. is a lot of pieces. I hope I haven't overwhelmed any of y'all because um, the project that we're making is not, um, not a normal project for me. Some, some might say it's, what's it called? Not, there's, Stamp It Up has these terms for stampers, beginner, avid, I can't remember all of them. Um, okay, there's that. Okay, so let me tell you what I did this morning. I put a piece of tearing tape under this track, okay? Here's a piece of tearing tape. Let me show you what it looks like without it. Um, yes, I have two left feet. So this is my other one, and you can see that the measurements are quite difficult to read, um, especially someone my age. <laughs> so I had somebody send me an email and say, put a piece of something under there. So this morning when I was trying to make this card, um, I said, oh Lord, I cannot see those measurements. So I put a piece of tear and tape along the entire strip and now it's just gonna stay there. Just don't remove the backing because it would stick to everything. Okay, so can y'all see that? Tear and tape. Um, so you're gonna remember uh, two and three quarters, okay? And I'm gonna take out the cutting blade because I just might forget what I'm doing. So we are only working with the uh, scoring blade right now. And I've turned my trimmer sideways. Hopefully you can see that sideways. The measurements are up here and then on this uh, guide. So two and three quarters is the mark that we want to use, okay? So I'm gonna place my paper, my Bermuda Bay paper, at the one and a quarter mark over here on the left, okay? So one and a quarter. 
and then I'm gonna score from two and three quarters to the edge. And it can be in, yeah. I'm gonna stop talking now. So let me bring this over to the two and three quarters. On this uh, scoring blade, there is a line that shows you that it matches up. So one and a quarter over here, two and three quarters, score. Okay, now we're gonna slide the paper down to two inches. And we're gonna start at that same spot, two and three quarters and score. Then we're gonna slide it down to three and an eighth. And line it up at the two and three quarters and score. On the four and a quarter, you're gonna score all the way across, okay? And then, whoops. And then you're gonna slide it down to six and an eighth and start at the two and three quarters and score, okay? Now, we're gonna turn this and line it up at the two and three quarters up here at the top, over here on the left. Gotta slide it up a bit so you can see it. So line it up to the two and three quarters, and then you're gonna cut from one and a quarter Hold on. Two and three quarters is right here. Two and a half, two and three quarters. And you're gonna cut from one and a quarter to six and an eighth. Oh, that's the scoring blade. <laughs> hey, at least it's better to get confused with the scoring blade than it is the cutting blade, right? Take that rascal out and put this one in. Okay, so one and a quarter to six and an eighth. Okay, so now we're gonna fold this in half and we need to burnish it with our bone folder. I hear you boys. Okay, so now gently Fold these okay there we go so here is our what is this called <laughs> a stair step card so now we get to add all these chicks to it and it's gonna be so beautiful Okay, so we're gonna flatten it out for now and we're gonna add our designer series paper. What row? That was way too much. I'm trying to get some of it up. Okay. There's that one. Remember this one I told you I didn't know if I had the right measurement or not? Yeah, that was right. It 
It looks complicated. It, it looks complicated. It's actually not too terribly complicated. Um, it's definitely not a beginner card. Okay, so we're gonna add this circle right here in the middle. Um, we're gonna add her over here, fuzzy head. So I'm using two dimensionals on her. This is just gonna get added with what? Nope, I did pop it up, so a dimensional as well. Ruh row. I only need one. Now, for all of these chicks, this lady's gonna go here, this one's gonna go back here, this one's in here, and then we have some grass to add. So, Let's see, this one right here, we're going to cut right there, and it's going to get added in here, and then this one's going to get added in here. Oh, I don't see my corn stalk. Where did it go? Did I toss it in the floor? Okay, this is gonna get added here. Oh, girl, I said okay like a dozen times already. Yes, I know. I'm not supposed to use it 5,000 times. It's gonna take me at least 21 days to retrain my brain. Okay, she's added. Oh, I said it again. This one's gonna get added with liquid glue just on the bottom. And then we're gonna add. Now, if you don't like the cattails coming up, you can trim those off. You don't have to leave them on there. I know I wanna trim. Well, let's just go ahead and add it. Then we'll see what we wanna trim. Actually, we don't have to trim it because we put that one behind. So we're gonna add the corn stalk here, but we're gonna bring it up a little bit higher so that it will show. Cut uh row, -oh. hold it longer. I did it right. Okay, now she's gonna go there. And I can tell that I do wanna trim the cattails on one, so let me show you. I feel like this one right here is blocking her too much, so I'm just gonna trim this off down here. We gotta add our little corn. And I will need my silicone mat for that. And I have my take your pick tool somewhere. Here it is. So let's see.
So now we're going to add, let's see, I think I have enough glue on here to use. Yep, I do. Here it is again. Oh, I forgot my ribbon. Hold on, rewind. We gotta put a little bit of, oh, we have embellishments too. I forgot about the rhinestones. I was concentrating so much on not messing up the card um, that I forgot about the ribbon and the, and the bling. You don't have to add the ribbon. I just, sometimes I feel like, oh, I cannot make a project and not have ribbon. So you don't have to do this step if you don't want to. And now our glue dot. Okay, let's compare the two of them. So here they are flat. And then you just fold it and it stands. Uh-oh, I lost a piece of corn. Oh, well, I'll add it later. I hope I didn't confuse anyone. I didn't mess up any steps. So the biggest piece of advice is just let let your liquid glue dry um, before you fold your card. Aren't they so cute? But now do you see why um, I, didn't, I didn't include this one in the bingo class? There's just... Yeah, it took me almost 45, yeah, it took 45 minutes to make it. <laughs> um, yeah, don't forget about my host code. Don't forget that celebration is ending. Uh, this Oso oh Ombre paper, you will probably see again uh, next week, uh, even though it will be retired, because I still have some projects to show you that I didn't, I didn't get done this week because of um, the bingo cutting. <laughs> yes. Um where to sign the card you can sign it down here so if you if you open it up like you can sign here and here because that's all hidden so this is your front of your card and this is the inside of your card so you can put a piece of white cardstock here or you can put a piece of white cardstock here and that's where you can sign it that was a great question thanks for asking Okay, you guys have a great day and thank you so much for being here. I'll see you later.